Welcome to the World United. Welcome to the World United. And now we'll um, we'll have so we'll we'll stay with us, Brenda, and we'll have Danny and Monica um, come back on. Now, the first thing I would like to invite is if either three of you have questions for each other based on what you've heard. Hi, hello. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. Thank you, Brenda. It was a really beautiful presentation. And, and I think it's all concluded too, like how we, we, we all have, you know, those differences and, and how, how it is important for us all to be present, speaking out, you know, speaking out the truth that, that is in the heart, because that is what is going to make this big difference, I think, in, in the world, in this beautiful world that, that we want to create. So that, that was wonderful. <laughs> Yes, and, and I've got a question here that um, relates to, well, all three of you actually, so um, whomever would like to, to say it. We, we started off, you know, Monica giving us that example of finding conviction and start using it, and that's come full circle with Brenda as well. And then in the middle, Danny, you've given us some of the um, tools really of how to address sometimes uh, it's about clearing, clearing out and knowing that right now there is a lot of things going on and that coming back to nature and putting ourselves in a place of nature can help rebalance as well as looking at our internal food, all of the others. So my, this question is, if you're seeing things that you say, I could do that better, or I, someone is wanting to speak out, but at the same time, if that load on them is too, is too they're feeling it's too much, is there some advice in terms of what to do that allows them to feel more capable straight away? And what sort of incremental steps can people do so that they start celebrating the, the changes that they are making? Is this an open, open for all now? Open for all. Oh, okay, great. Glad I came back on. Um, I would just say one step at a time, you know, like uh, um, I... Um, was not always this strong. Um, I actually was taken advantage of a lot when I was younger um, by, by boyfriends, by um, friends or that I thought were friends. Um, and, you know, I was overweight, so I had low self-esteem and um, I was like that for seven years. I got trampled on over and over and over again. And in fact, I trampled on myself over and over again as well. So when someone says, oh, you've got to find your conviction, like when it's coming from... I'll just say personally, like, I'm not asking you to do anything that I haven't had to do myself. Um, you know, it, I had to, try, I, I've been single most of my life, except for the bad boyfriends before this one. And um, I traveled alone um, to put myself in awkward situations so that I could grow. So it was like a five year journey. So the point is, is like, you don't wake up with conviction. It takes a long time to happen, but it starts when you decide. And then the journey begins, which is something someone said in the last session, which I really liked. It actually changes in a moment. And you'll have this moment where you stand up for yourself and you realize how powerful it is and how great you feel. And then you just never look back. Uh, I remember once in a, in a nightclub, uh, a, a guy touched my backside and I, he turned around and I punched him in the back. And that was to me like a massive moment of change. I was like, yeah, you can't do that to me and get away with it. And if from there on, it just all changed. And also just one more thing I'll say on that is um, sometimes the most negative things that happen to us are actually the most beautiful things that happen uh, because, so I was in a bad place in my life and I got, I got drugged at a, at a work Christmas party and it was the worst thing that had ever happened to me. Um, but it, it took me out of the position that I was in. I was about 25, 26. Everything was going really badly. I moved back home with my parents. I went back to church and it was a hard process. I was depressed for many months. I didn't work for the first time in my life. 
I felt I couldn't get justice either. So I never got justice for what happened. But uh, about three years later, I messaged the girl who I think did it. And I actually thanked her for doing it because if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't ever have um, become the person I am today. So if something really terrible happens to you, see it as a blessing and look for the, the chance to grow instead of um, for letting it hold you back. I don't know if I stayed on topic there, but anyway. <laughs> The panel is always on topic. And, and as you said, that was an, also a, a good example of, like Danny was saying, the importance of releasing the toxicity to move into your power as well. So by being able to go back to that person and thank them in a way is also saying it, it's gone. You know, you don't, you don't hold anything over me. I'm, I've let that go. As you said, you find, you find the strength in it. Beautiful. Yeah. And Brenda. Yes, I suppose I wanted to add um, that sometimes you don't feel like it's enough to challenge for yourself. But I feel if you also think about the future generation, like particularly like the male dominated industries, right? Um, things that are the way they are is because it's always been that way. So often as women, women coming in, we see problems that men haven't thought about or haven't considered because it hasn't been the front of mind for them. So often I empower and I use it for myself like okay maybe it doesn't really affect me much but what's going to happen when the next woman comes into this and you know comes and starts a job here for example toilets are still a big issue in the construction industry the lack thereof or the um, insufficient facilities that are within the toilets themselves so really being able to not just deal with it but choosing to challenge and saying well um, if you can't fix it now at least fix it for you know when I'm gone or you know before you just choose to resign and leave things as they are so that's often a, a, an encouragement to to think of the future and to to make the, the world a better place the workplace a better place um, that can be something that's um, that can help people to choose to go that step and report something or ask the, your boss why things are the way they are Beautiful. And it does often start with asking. And I guess also there's the brain science in there that lets us know that when we ask something that's contrary or triggering, that it's normal to get a negative response to start with. And just to allow that to be, not, not to not confront it, but allow that to be there. And at the same time, keep confronting it, which that word confront is lovely when it's broken down. It's just come to the front bring it to the front, bring it to the front, bring it to the front. So to, to change the way we look at things now and say it's actually super health, healthy, healthy to bring things to the front. And uh, that leads to a question they have in terms of sometimes when we're right here today, um, it seems like a big step to do something. But I was wondering if um, if any one of you had an example or another example because you've already shared where you can see a, a relatively clear point where an action that you chose that at the time seemed smallish had a big outcome like we definitely heard Monica's that ability to that was a big decision with a big outcome to take those bail laws away those bail conditions because it also means it removes the precedent being set which is very important are there other examples you see there so listeners can say, well, actually, I did it. It didn't seem to make a difference, but this much time later, things are different. Yeah, I can, I, I can talk. <laughs> yeah, um, when I was, I was uh, traveling alone in America, um, uh, you know, just, just on my own for a year and a half. And um, I, that, that's when I started uh, to pick up a camera and I started just asking random people questions. Actually, my first one was in Thailand, but I, I knew nothing about cameras or anything like that. And um, I did a lot of free work for people. I just promoted like um, orphanages or um, I went and did some work at a hurricane disaster zone in Florida. Um, and it was hours and hours of free promotion for people and things like that. But um, I just knew that um, it would all amount to something, you know? And mm. so that, that's why that it's, so sometimes you think that you're hitting your head against the wall and that no one's listening and then, but it all adds up, but you have to be persistent. Um, mm. So just know that even if it's not making an impact right now in, in that moment, um, 
it will later and you just don't know exactly when. Mm. Yeah, that, that, that's it. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, persistence is a very good word and that, you, and that it does add up. And I think that's a great thing for everybody who's listening as well to hear about stepping up. Yes. Also just being okay with letting stuff go. Yeah. Adding on that. Um, I think, you know, like when it's very important, like putting brand as you no know, stepping into our power, you know, like when we we are, you know, in our heart and doing it, you know, sometimes we are not being heard. And and I have not been heard for a long time, you know, in my life, because I was the always the different one talking about all these conspiracy theor- uh, theories for for a long time. And who would listen to me? Nobody listened. And talking about emotions and this healing process and chakras and and all of these, you know, I still still lots of people, you know, don't, don't hear that. But that's okay too, because. There is people who I, I have learned on my on my path that it's okay, you know. Some people, you know, you're gonna speak up to to people who is ready to listen. And uh, one thing comes after the other because I think first we also need to be uh, ready on, on our journey, uh, experience it, have those experiences before we can, you know, get to to the point and and be understood and have this conviction really inside of us because we have lived this process we have understood you know and and, and it's okay sometimes we see it that that we planted a seed and that's going to be coming uh, later you know people will come back to you and now a lot of people comes to me and said oh danny you know you know a lot of what's happening and i'm, I'm follow monica a lot so <laughs> i know exactly what's been happening so monica has been really a, an inspiration i think for for me like to to have this this strength you know in this courage in this time that we're living now because if it wasn't for that, you know, the emotions are, are being, like, as I said, the emotions are being stirred up a lot. And, and we have this fear coming out. Even me, you know, as, as having all, all my tools, being a, a holistic therapist, I feel my emotions. I'm a human, you know. I feel fear when I have to cross the border and a police officer there gives me a hard time. I'm shaking, you know. And, and because I am feeling my fear, you know, but I'm not avoiding it too. And that's the thing, you know, you have the courage to go and do it and, and, and do it anyway in your, in your conviction. You know, it doesn't matter the results because when you do it from the heart, at some point, you know, it's, it's, it's all working because you're doing from this higher perspective, this higher point. And, and it's planting the seeds. And, 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 and this is Monica Sands is, is a matter of consistency because we get there, you know, it's just like little by little because things need to happen before other things happen. You know, like, um, for example, you know, like uh, some Monica saying, you know, that uh, we, we have lost the, the, um, the thing on the parliament, on the, on the uh, Supreme Court. And it was very interesting. The lawyer was saying that, uh, oh, we have learned something very important today that we don't have any rights. Okay, so now, yes, it's something that we've learned. So now we go and get some rights. Okay, so now we are aware of those things and the next steps that we can take. And so that's why some things need to happen. So if it wasn't for all of this happening, we wouldn't have been looking at all those laws that has been passing. That's insane. So if it wasn't for all of these, you know, we wouldn't be looking into it. So, and I think, you know, I hope it makes sense. It's all in a process, in a timing, you know, that things need to, to, to happen. And I hope that's heads up with the question. Yeah, totally, that, that is, there is a process, there is a timing, there is the coming together. And for example, seeing that there are things now that you can say, that doesn't make sense. That's not what we stand for. And to then, you know, as, as Brenda said as well, to step up when you find something that you don't stand for. And, uh, and in that case, Brenda, too, I was, I was interested to know if you've seen much change um, in terms of women in engineering, because I, I know that you said it was 12%, and I do know that you do that mentoring 
for the women coming into the industry. So I'm really keen to hear if you've seen change. Yes, yes, that's a great question, Geraldine. Um, to be fair, the numbers haven't shifted much over the 15, 16 years I've been in the industry. It's always hovered around the 10, 11, 12%. So um, the piece that I really have been focusing on um, is really just going through and letting people know what engineers actually do, because a lot of people still look at me and like, what does a chemical engineer actually do? Um, so it's really about just, um, yeah, going and talking and predominantly at the kids, the high school ages, I did a, a talk actually back at my alumni, like from Zimbabwe, I'm from Zimbabwe originally, I came to Australia when I was 18. I did a talk at my old high school, um, probably about a month ago now, just talking through what are the different types of engineers, what are the benefits of engineers, why would you want to become one, um, the typical salary that you get as well. Because I think as, 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 as children, you're probably not exposed as much, um, both by media and TV, like there's no real engineering TV shows per, per se, like you would have for your doctors and your lawyers and the other typical um, streams. So there's just a, bit, a big cloud of unknown. So, um, but certainly what we are seeing is a lot of the barriers to entry are dropping. So certainly a lot more um, conscious effort from companies to change even the, high, the, the language used in recruitment adverts that were typically very male, um, you know, male <laughs> facing, you know, perhaps it talks about, you know, um, heavy lifting required or something to that, that nature. So really being, they're starting to challenge um, some of the roles that have been traditionally male. Why do we need males here? Oh, because they're heavier set. Well, is it actually helping their bodies to be, you know, constantly being under duress? Or can we put a, me a mechanical device that can help us to lift? And so really starting to get people to think differently about doing jobs smarter and safer um, so that women can be uh, included in the conversation. So those are the type of steps we're starting to see. And there's a whole lot more focus on, women at each level, we still need more at the top, but um, they're certainly filtering through um, in, in, in many ways. So this, this, it's, it's looking good, Geraldine, compared to what it was, but there's still plenty more work to be done. That's good to hear. We'll, we'll keep the message out there and keep inviting people because as we've said, it's the collaboration and the diversity that allows us to be in a different place than from where we are right now like the current politics, the current decisions, the current proposals can be different when there's a diversity of voices at the table and people willing to stand up and say that's not quite representing where we're at and probably a long way from it. So um, with that too, my next, so I appreciate what you're doing because I love to see more women when I'm working as well in the collaborative process because it does bring about a different sort of discussion now even without the women men just different genders different people have different perspectives so to have a good mix you have a, a, a wider perspective and that um that brings up a question that i had for monica as well in that way in terms of right now you know the two sides where they say there's a part we we need to put out a fire and right now there's a there's a big fire burning and um, there's multiple ways of managing that, whether it's changing policies for future, as Danny just mentioned, when something gets overturned, how do we do it differently? What, is, what are other things that you see that you could ask the population at large of the whole globe, because I know that's where the message is often going to, that helps create this new future that we create every day such that the policies that we're looking at now really don't get the run on the board that they are because there's more perspectives, more checks and balances in place before it gets there. Is it a completely new political system that's needed or can we do it with different sorts of representation? Well, I think someone said to me just this morning at a meeting actually that we've been very reactionary um, and that's, that's me as well. So something happens and we're like, Ugh, we're going to go after it. And it's like, we're just constantly putting out fires, like you said, and it's really emotionally draining. And I think it's a tactic, actually. It's a psychological tactic to wear us thin um, because we're just going after all these little spot fires. Um, and maybe maybe it's distracting us from the big, big problems. Um, very possible. I mean, there's geniuses up there, obviously, controlling the narrative and, 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 how, and knowing how we're going to respond. Um, so 
maybe we need to stop being reactionary and start thinking more bigger picture. And I think it starts from within just yourself, obviously. So if you, like I said, if you find that strength, then it will, it will um, emulate to your surrounding friends and family and things like that. And then things will evolve and you don't even know what's happening. And all of a sudden you've, you've created this new group or you've given um, someone empowerment that, that does something amazing as well. So I think, uh, so I will get to the political side of things first, but I think, you know, another thing I thought of is it's one thing to empower one person, but if you can empower someone to empower others, game over, game over. Like I'm pretty sure the reason I got put in prison was when I created the community groups. Um, so with there's a hundred community groups around Australia. Some of them have 180 members in them. I think that the geniuses at the, the psychological geniuses at the top know that if you have a group of people who are connected emotionally and physically and support each other, they can't control them because they have that support. And we're going to start youth groups soon as well, uh, because a lot of teenagers are getting pressured to take the jab if they don't that they don't want to. Um, so anyway, the point is, is I think that's the most important thing. And if if these if there was 2000 community groups around Australia, then political change would just happen because the people actually have the power. It's just that we've lost the power because we've been divided. Um, you know, the famous saying divided, we fall, you know, that one. Um, so I think with the lockdowns and stuff, we've all been quite separated um and even in church communities and other communities um they're dobbing on each other and so they've succeeded in a lot of that sort of division so from a political standpoint though it's really exciting because people have never been so excited about politics ever in australian history i imagine i knew nothing about politics before covid just so you know i barely even knew who scott morrison was and i didn't care and that's probably why we're in the position that we're in because people like me were just selfish living their lives and not doing anything for political change this is probably why we're in this position so it's really exciting because these community groups will obviously act as campaigning tools for the federal election and rda obviously has a great audience and we will be advocating for any good candidates. It doesn't matter what party they're from. Well, except for the major four, of course. Um, but, you know, there's, ton there's tons of minor parties and they're actually all working together behind the scenes, which is really exciting as well. We're planning to do a show once every two weeks with a leader from all the minor parties to show the audience what's going on. So, okay, we are in a very exciting position in Australia for a revolution and not a violent one, um, a political one. So as long as we still have the right to vote in the federal election in like five months time, if there isn't a big shift in the federal election, that's gonna be pretty a sad time for me. Um, so uh, we've looked at the fraud side of things and so far it looks like um, fraud won't be a problem because you can have as many scrutineers in the building as you want. So yes, um, I think political change is absolutely the way forward and so is legal change there is a judge out there who is ready to be a hero. I just know it. They're older. They're about to retire. They've got grandkids who have tried to commit suicide or something like that. Or, you know, and they're just waiting for the right case to come past their desk. And they are not bought and paid for by the government. There is a judge out there. I'm absolutely confirmed. I just know that. I know that. I prayed really hard for a good judge on my case. And I got the best, I think, at that point. She was so great. Um, so the point is, I, I think political and legal is the way forward for Australia, informing the asleep, so to speak, I don't really like saying that, but informing the people who refuse to see the truth. I think that that era is over. Uh, we've tried and the information's out there. So uh, sorry, I hope I didn't ramble too much. But yeah, that's my answer. <laughs> Oh, it's not a ramble. The whole thing about panels and questions is that these, that's why it just comes so from the heart because it just is. Yeah, this is what it is. And as you said, it requires all those different facets to make, to make the change. Putting out the fires is needed right when they're there. And it's almost like if you have a, that's why coming together as a community, you have some people in your community who put out fires. You have some people in your community who work on policy. You have some people in your community who work on education. You know, all together, we bring solutions. So, um, yeah, definitely appreciate appreciate the work that's not just work, appreciate the focus and intention that's going on. And that's another open question that I have to anybody in terms of, again, mindset so mindset plus action really has an outcome and and as we heard earlier that 
um, a decision, when a decision is made to do something different, that starts a difference. But what would the advice be to someone who has got to the point where they've they've said, I'm going to do this differently now, or I am going to, I am going to talk about that. And then they get a knock back and get quiet again. So what are some tools and techniques that you've had in terms of irrespective of of a, a knockback that comes or a push down, what are tools to use to come back up again? I'll just say one really, really short thing. I, I'm, I'm from sales um, and every no is one step closer to a yes. So every fall is one step closer to an amazing opportunity. It's a ratio. It's a numbers game. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's really good, Monica, because I also have a similar, um, I did a challenge quite recently, it was called the rejection, well, it was a confidence program, confidence transformation program, and we had to do a rejection challenge. And essentially what it entailed was going to a um, series of cafes and requesting a free coffee. So <laughs> I'm sure lots of people have really felt like, what, free coffee, me just walking in and asking for one. Um, and so we had to go and embark on this challenge. And I remember walking to that first, you know, cafe and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, like I had to stand behind paying customers. And in my mind, I was thinking, oh my gosh, what am I going to say? What am I going to say? What am I going to say? And I essentially just said, um, the, 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 the notion was that without rejection, you won't get to your yes. Like there has to be several no's before you get to a yes. And maybe there's only one or two no's and sometimes there's four or five. And every success story that we know, be it Oprah, Bill Gates, whoever may be your, um, your, your person, they've also had to go through a number of challenges, a number of knockbacks, a number of setbacks um, in order to get to their destination. And so I walked into that first cafe and I, um, I asked the lady, I was like, hello, I'm doing a confidence transformation challenge. And um, one of the activities we have to do is to ask for free coffee. And she was like, oh, okay, that's interesting. So um, and she's like, oh, well, I'll go ask my boss up around the back. So she went around to the boss um, and she was gone for like 30 seconds, 40 seconds. And I was just like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And she came out and she's like, um, sorry, unfortunately not today. And I was like, okay, thank you so much. And then I just walked out. I'm like, ah, <laughs> that did not just happen. Um, but I had to keep on, I had to regroup, breathe, and remember that, you know, rejection is part of the process, build your muscle, um, you never know when the next guest is around the corner. And literally 40 meters down was the second cafe, so I walked on in there, I tried to revise my pitch a little bit, so I just went in there and sort of said, hello, um, we are, I, I'm, I'm just looking to get a free coffee, please, and she's like, oh, what's, what's that for? And I said, I'm doing a confidence transformation challenge, and we need to, um, understand that rejection is simply part of the process but you know people might say yes or something to that effect and she was just like she looked back to the bar barista and she's like hi can you get a free coffee for her and she's like yeah what does she want and I actually had a thought about what I wanted so I was like oh just a latte please and just like that um, I got a yes so I think the lesson there is really that we should just keep on you know dust ourselves off and try again pick ourselves up we never know when that next yes is around the corner. Beautiful. Yeah, that's yes. I'll just say yes. And I think Danny has something to add to that too. Yeah, I think it's, it's beautiful because that's the opportunities. We all have opportunities coming to us as a way of learning of, you know, we haven't got it right this time, but we know but something has happened, a lesson has happened, an emotion had flown out, you know. We have got blessed with this opportunity somehow for growth, for change. And, and I think it's all, all, all made of these opportunities. And I don't know what else I want to say. <laughs> so many. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, that's totally fine. Yes, yes. Um, as, uh, just so I don't hog all the questions, do, does anyone have a question for each other? Otherwise, I'll go to one of the others here. I just oh. want to, want to uh, say to Monica, you know, that I really, you know, admire, you know, all the, the, the courage and, and the strength that she's been giving to, to all of us at the moment. Because and and that's the beauty beauty you know of being on our on our purpose from the heart. Like she didn't even know you know that uh, about politics or anything. And, and me neither you know. I just don't. It's not my my field. But once we have to to understand and and see 
what the thing what is happening you know we have to go there so it was very beautiful what you said as well and and also I've been praying a lot as well because I think that's that's what is very important. That's what we really need at the moment is to keep this faith, keep this faith that's not always evil. You know, there are good people out there and 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 good people that empower as well. So so hopefully that is is what is going to bring the, the change that we are hoping. To, you know, more people awakening, more people in power awakening and, and finishing, finishing with this, this game, you know, understanding that, no, we don't want to live in, in this way, you know, we want to live in unity, in love, in harmony, you know, it's having, and, and as we all said, it's, it's collaborating everyone with their own uniqueness and your own a talents to add, you know, like Monica for, wasn't very good at politics, but she probably definitely very good now and, and, and putting uh, your your conviction and your and your courage and your strength, you know, and, and believing also in having this faith in the system as well, because I, I'm not from here, I'm from Brazil, you know, things are hard over there as well, you know, but I always felt that Australia is a place of freedom, you know, and the beauty, I saw your video, yesterday you know and it is you know it's been changed we we have we and that's why i fall in love with australia you know because we is a place where we live in peace in unity where there is respect you know respect to each other and respect of the laws as well which is very very beautiful and powerful so i trust in in, in the people's goodness in the people's good heart and I know that even people that's not awakening and, and is doing, you know, you know, going ahead with things and that's also feeding and making things worse at the same time. But at the same time, they have their purpose as well. Probably, you know, they're doing things from, from their heart, following, doing their goodness, you know. And I think that's that's what's important to, to trust as well, the power of the heart, that people is doing the best they can in the way that they believe. So, but, you know, but... It is part of their job also to awaken, as I spoke, you know, before, to have this awakening because it's something that happens from inside out. So probably we can be here and speaking to people and giving our, our inspirations and, and giving motivations for, for them to change, for people to change or for change something that's not going, not going good in our lives at the moment. But that needs to come from the, the person's choice. You know, the person inside needs to come and say, no, yeah, I need to, to do something different. And, you know, and that's when this ha we have this awakening and, and this choice and this next step, they say, yes, okay, I'm going for it. And then I think once you, you choose, you know, the right step for you when you are in your real power, I feel that we get to you know everything that we need to to help us we have the people we need you know we have the collaboration we need because we're not alone as well you know it's our sh our light our lights shining you know so um someone is good with something other person is in it and it's beautiful that's what we're doing here is putting this unity all together because yeah it's, we not don't do it alone you know we do it we do it all together. We've been learned how to be so separate, you know, and that's part of our our conditioning, you know, our programming, as as I spoke. And 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 it's time now for us to awaken and to create this, you know, a more unifying, united people, you know, with all the hearts uh, together, you know, for without putting each other down as well, and but also elevating everyone you know because understanding that everyone is, is going through different process everyone is having you know and, and at some point they're gonna have this this earning i think inside of each of us to to awaken and to 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 feed diff something different in the system to change their emotions and to to really elevate the perspective so that's what we 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 want in, in this world you know a more elevated award with different uh more elevated perspectives but we all have that we have that in our nature it is in our heart so we have to trust the goodness of of the humankind and that's what the message i want to want to put it out 
That's a great message. The goodness of humankind and also the goodness of um, asking ourselves, is this mine to do? And I know the elder uh, grandmother parisha will say that, you know, is it is it mine to do? Is it yours to do? And as Brenda said, we're put in, we are put in a place to find solutions. And if we don't, if we don't do them, then things don't change. And I love that other saying of um, if we want to go fast, go alone. If we want to go far, go together. And that's the lead to my next question, which is when someone feels they've stepped up into the power, they have said something that built themselves back up from a couple of no's and they're now at the point where they've realised they were in that place for a particular solution, this next bit of instead of just going fast alone, about going far and going together, what are some of the steps in terms of bringing people around the togetherness? What are some of the steps in building togetherness so that we go far? Um, can I? Yeah. Uh, well, I when I first started Reignite Democracy Australia, I was doing everything. Um, I... I thought that I had the best message and no one else could do what I was doing, you know, and I didn't want to let go because it's kind of hard to train people, you know, and then something happened. Uh, well, first I had just one staff member, but then before, when I started the community groups, that was really difficult for me because it was like, I was trusting these kind of strangers with my branding and my name and stuff like that. And something, I can't remember the moment when I, decided this but I came up with my own little internal saying which is um you've got to let go to grow and you know after I realized that the groups just went absolutely bonkers because I wasn't afraid of one person out of every 10 ruining my brand I was like yeah well there's nine people doing a great job so I think we can be scared. We're scared of working with people because we're afraid that they're going to do something wrong to us or to the, the look of something or something. But the, the amount of goodness that will come out of it is going to far over, overshadow. So with all the influences in, in Australia and the leaders, um, there was definitely a time where the pain wasn't high enough. So people were being still petty. Um, now, I've never engaged in online um, uh, pettiness. So I think I, I've continued to have some sort of reputation in that field. I haven't, I never got, I never respond to trolls or all this crap. I just never respond to it. So um, now, though, the pain is so high that everyone is coming together and they don't care. No one cares about what you think about X, Y, and Z because we're fighting for our freedom. And without our freedom, we can't fight for X, Y, and Z. So let's get our freedoms back and then we can start being petty again, okay? Because that's human nature. We're going to forget this pain and we're going to go back to being petty. But right now, we don't have the time for it. So my my last advice would be, yeah, let go to grow and you'll see. Mm. That, that's a great one. I like that, let go to grow. And also, um, you know, as you said, when people have awoken from the comfortably numb, they're ready to come together. Yeah, yeah. Let go to grow. I really like that one. Um, I'll also add that I think um, something that was evident in my career was the, the shift when I moved from like a solo performer um, into a manager role. So you've now moved from a place where you've got control of your workload, you understand what's needed, you've got quality control in terms of the output. Um, and then all of a sudden now you've got a whole team of people that you're managing and your performance is determined by their um, output essentially. So uh, again, let go to grow because I had to let go of the um, <laughs> control, um, let go of the individual um, effort and really seek to see how can I enhance the skills that I've got underneath me like who are these people what do they bring to the table what are they passionate about understanding them on a human level and then on a professional level and seeing how best can we actually use our skills to produce a better outcome um, together and so I think that's really the the, the flow the blood flow that, that that comes through when we want to effect change as a community and I mean even the pandemic was probably an interesting case study in that we had to make decisions very quickly. Like it was a new normal, it was unprecedented. We probably know those words a bit too much. Um, but in that 
for people being thrown into that, we had to come up with solutions and they had to come up with them quickly. And what I saw in the, in the, in the, um, in the corporate world, in the workplace, was that people came up with ways very quickly to identify um, what do we do if someone gets sick on this shift or in this crew? How can we have multiple rosters so we avoid um, you know, cross-contamination? Or how can we check drivers? What can we put into place if, you know, in weeks? Um, changes were effected and implemented whereby in corporate typically takes forever. <laughs> it can take months when people don't care enough about a, a policy or don't care enough about a, um, a movement. They, they don't really invest the time. But when something is really um, of the essence and important, people can come together and people can work together to get farther. So I think those are really the two elements around um, definitely teamwork and a vision that's, that's, that's driving us all towards that one end goal. Oh, I was going to say, yes, the, vi the vision is an important part of that as well. Yes, that was really good to bring that, that one up. And it's the unit, yes. you know, again, the unit and putting, you know, all gathering forces and, and all together in, in communities and, and, and in the workplace and, and with our families, you know, of all groups that our little tribes, of, you know, that we can, we can spread a little bit, you know, of, of our individualities in, in, in a whole to give you a little bit of what we we are good at, you know, even if it's like in a good word, you know, a good cup of coffee, a good hug from a friend, you know. So it's all, all everyone, you know, valuable at the moment. And yes, it is very important that we do create this, this unit and this collaborations. And I think that's all this age of Aquarius that we are entering now, you know, it's like we're moving from uh, being like, uh, because we, we've been like so, codependent as well so is, is a difference between we being codependent when we are dependent on someone you know but we're moving I think more in like we're dependent on the government dependent on 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 all others you know many other people and, and a lot of things you're so dependent beings you know to live in our lives as well but I think now we are moving to a, a period where we are moving to being more interconnected so instead of being inter interdependent you know we we are independent beings but also you know this we need to be interconnected as well you know in our you know independence you know inter interdependent you know like be uh, in this all together understanding that we are all together in this as well because if everyone puts uh, something like in a field a thought an action you know is going to have a great influence on, on every everyone and everything around and and that's what it is important so that we, we look at you know the what you have been putting what you have been befitting you know around with with our our thoughts our words and and all of that so just to add that yes <laughs> i've I don't have more to add to that because that is a key part of it. So if any, wherever someone's at in life, there's a start. I don't think there's anyone that can't do one of those things you just mentioned locally. And combine that with if you're somewhere and you notice it could be done differently, you're put in place to find that solution. And as Monica said, you find that conviction as well and Feel what it's like when you draw a line and you say this line doesn't get crossed because there is that saying that uh, all it takes for evil to flourish is for good people to do nothing. So what, what we, whether it's a, a noisy breast pump that means you're, you know, you're feeling one of the most beautiful things in nature is, you know, being highly compromised and not valued and all the ripple effects of that to the potential of political change that really does remove day-to-day -day, um, freedom of, not only freedom of choice, but beingness in place. So all of these, the whole suite, it's the same thing. It's an emanation of something that can be done better. And through your presentations, you've given us examples of how you can build yourself up, how you can come back from rejection, how you can be okay when there is stuff that's 
no, not so awesome, saying, well, that's all the toxic parts coming off and looking after yourself from that nourishment, as uh, Danny shared, whether it be food, sunshine, nature time, you know, letting go of toxic emotions, that all allows us to, to be uh, even more powerful as, as the advocates and change makers that we are. And that if you feel you're not personally an out there powerful change maker, you can be part of that bundle of sticks. You know, as Monica mentioned, there's staff there, there's people on the social media. What's your role? Like what's a part for everyone listening? What's a part we can be there? And uh, it's the last last part of questions now. Um, we're just really starting to wrap up. You're most welcome to have this time to, of course, let people know how to find out more about being in contact with you and the, the programs that you're doing. And I'll hand it over to you as we, we do our final close of our panel session. I guess I've been going first, so I'll just go. Um, yeah, it's reignitedemocracyaustralia.com.au. Um, we, we always do current campaigns. So at the moment, it's stopping the bill in Victoria, of course. Um, so there's all the contact details of all the members of parliament that are going to be voting on that. But I think um, if there was one thing I would want people to do is to check to see if there's a community group in your area. So like I said, there's close to 100 groups. If you go onto the website, there's a tab right at the top that says community groups. You go there, there's a whole list. There's even a map with little pinpoints and you can see um, how close your nearest one is. Then you apply to join them and they will contact you or, or add you to a Telegram group. Or They all have their own ways of communicating because the groups are actually, they're, um, they have... Um, and what's the word I'm looking for? Autonomy. They're, thank you. They have, <laughs> or I think I have a bit of dyslexia. I do that. I switch, switch words around all the time. But anyway, luckily I get away with it. Um, yes. So they are that. So they can do what they want uh, with their groups. So um, just apply and see how it goes. And if there's not a group near you, you can start one and we will help you. So we give you all the resources. We um, have we have 85,000 people on our email database and we've actually been able to segregate them into postcodes and electorate. So if you want to start a group, we email the people are surrounding your area. You meet up at a park, 30 or 40 or sometimes 80 people will turn up and there you have your group and you can do with it what you want. I don't care whether you just have dance parties. It doesn't matter. Just connect with each other. You don't have to be campaigners. You can hate politics. I don't care. You can you can bloody you know sew or something together. I, I don't really don't care, but just find each other. That's my that's my last message. Thanks. <laughs> Love it. Find each other. That's a good one. Yes, yes. Thanks, Monica. And and Danny, did you have one? I just want to say that you know that people you know like hanging there you know and um, keep using like. Keep being in nature and, and definitely go ahead and try some essential oils with me or have a, a holistic therapy so we can understand, you know, what's happening inside so we can deal with these emotions and we can have natural solutions to all this anxiety that's coming up at the moment and, and how we can, like, ground ourselves, you know, so, so the essential oils and, and the flower essence, all this, those therapies really help us to to go through these hard times that we're going at the moment. They even to reduce the toxic load, as I said, you know, with natural alternative products, but also, you know, with our emotion balancing and, 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 the, and that's what we need to elevate this vibration, keep elevating, you know, our, our emotions. Sometimes, yes, it is hard, they're coming out, you know, but that's okay. And that's, that's part of our nature too, but it just cannot be holding on to, to this density, to this dark and dense energies, but you know, to let it, let it go, let it purge, you know, with love, because we need to love ourselves in this process and love the others that also it is in this process, you know, because you have, you know, to, to as I said, you know, have compassion, you know, for everyone that that is going is going through through all these difficult times. We all we all in this together. So I'm glad to help, you know, if anyone that needs assistance. On, on your journey to to find you know this strength find this grounding find peace you know elevate your emotions and understand more about yourself because i think that's what's really important at the moment and that was my message you know to find find your true nature your true power that it is in our in our 
it is in us and it's part of who we are. But it's also important that we understand how to understand who we are not and what we've learned, what we've been programmed to, to be and to do and, you know, to feel. But, you know, go back, you know, go back to, to the heart, nature, and, you know, nature can help us. So that's my final message. It's very, very grateful to be here and part of this, you know, and I think creating, you know, this, this event, you know, with all of these, these people and all of these great uh, topics is already a way that we are contributing on, on creating the, this community and finding each other as well, you know, so we are not separated. And as I said, to you know, the healing process, the awakening process is not, is not a, 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 a easy one, you know, so get support, get help, you know, talk to people that, that's going to help you to, to elevate this together, okay? Mm -hmm. You're not alone. Thank you. <laughs> that's wonderful. And so the two often go together. If you actually are feeling heavy, and then you're able to get in a group and do something about what is making you feel heavy, you can shift that energy of heaviness through a directed action as well and, yeah, and yeah, get outcomes. Yeah. So our actions are very important, but sometimes we get so, you know, in our comfort zone and we feel like, oh, I can't move because the energy is heavy. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. it's hard sometimes to even get out of the bed, you know, because it is heavy. We're living in this this heavy time so we need to do something about it we cannot be just waiting comfortable in our couch doing nothing anymore you know it's time to to do something and starting with the change in 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 yourself you know in your you know like self-awareness and change the things that that we need of things that we need to change in our lives in our attitudes in our habits in our emotions in the way to think way to relate and yeah <laughs> that's no yeah, wonderful wonderful thank you i appreciate that and brenda have you got some um closing words for our our panel yes 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 um just your last statement there before geraldine um there's a book by lovey ajayi jones called the professional troublemaker and in there she's got this one quote which is will you be proud of your silence and that, that, that one little line now makes, makes me think, <laughs> you, know, um, you know, if I walked away and it was the last opportunity I had to speak into this before something else um, came out of it, like, would I be proud of my silence? And I just want to leave that with the audience um, so that they can be inspired to change and challenge and step up, speak out and stand out. Um, anyone can find me on LinkedIn, Instagram and Facebook under Brenda Denbeston. Um, if you can see my name under there, that's just um, where I am and how, I, how, how you can find me on all socials. I've got a Facebook group called The Chronicles of a Female Engineer. In there, we've got interviews with engineers, female engineers in various industries, um, a community of support where we can share some of the ways we navigate bar barriers um, in the industry, in the workplace, and how to excel in our careers so we can effectively change the world. So that's my invitation to the audience today. Thank you so much for having me today. Absolutely, pleasure. And that's a, that's a beautiful encouragement to all who are watching. And I greatly appreciate uh, all, all three powerful women, Brenda, Danny, and Monica, for sharing the time today and the experience. And may it absolutely emanate out and create change, wake people up, stand up, take action. Lovely. We're going to have a little bit of music now just for a short break. And I'm I'm going to make the video work as well Thank at you. the end of today's oh. session, but I'll we'll get that working as well. Yes, but we'll talk we'll talk again soon. <laughs>